So for much of my life, finding a role model was nearly impossible until I figured out that absolutely everybody is a potential role model, and that awareness changed my life for the better. Well, why does this matter? Well, whether we realize it or not, every day we're all checking in with role models. Unconsciously or consciously, we're looking for people that we approve of, we disapprove of, something they did that we like, something they did that we didn't like. It's just how we roll. Whether you're a teenager, whether you're an alleged adult, that's just what we do. But we live in a culture that makes it hard to find role models now, don't we? I mean, we live in a culture of outrage and teardown. And even the good people get covered with slime once in a while, or people who we thought were good can get revealed to be, have some sort of terrible secret. And when that happens, if you invested a lot into them, it can be personally devastating. I know it has been for me over the last few years. So where can you look for guidance? Well, I created a little thing I call hashtag role model, but I'll get back to that. I was raised by a single mom with two older siblings who were much older, 10 years older and 13 years older. And that meant I spent a lot of time alone. So my role models as a kid were characters on TV or characters that I read about. In fact, my top three characters were, or role models were um, Spider-Man, a nerdy teenager who turns into a great superhero. Yeah, I can get behind that, and I've been looking for a radioactive spider most of my life. <laughs> Captain Kirk, because he was just straight up awesome. He was brave, loyal to his friends, never quit, and he's pretty good with the ladies. And my third one, fourth, third, whatever, was Rob Petrie, Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> and here's why. He's a guy who could sing, he could dance, he was a good friend, he was a comedy writer, and he had a stable family life. That was something I could get behind. The problem with these role models, though, was that they're fictitious. So in some ways, that makes them kind of terrible, because they're impossible. So I looked around in the real world, looking for people I could emulate, people I could latch on to. And I ran into another problem there, is that everybody seems perfect. Except they're not, really. Their perfection was it a creation of the media, or a presentation in history books, or maybe my own self-imposed expectations? And that left me looking at them not as guideposts, but as stop signs. And every time I failed to live up to their perfection, my self-esteem would drop just a little bit more. So what was I looking for anyway? Well, I was looking for people who reflected values and ethics that I wanted, and I wanted people who could be trailblazers that could lead me into a life that I wanted to live, and not a life that I accepted as a default option. <clears throat> e. Cummings said, it takes great courage to grow up and become who you really are. I first read this quote about 10 years ago, and it really changed my life, and it's something I've tried to adopt. Um, I don't know that I'm always courageous. I definitely don't think I'm always grown up. But it has worked for me to kind of embrace my inherent gymnast. Um, and I didn't know that. but. Somebody gave me a gift a long time ago, and I'm going to share that with you. About 25 years ago, I worked on this very stage as part of the Barnstable Summer Family Theater. I wrote, directed, produced, and acted in shows um, that included entire families, from small children to teenagers and their parents. It was a sli slice of time, usually July and August, and outside of that, I was up at school living a crazy life. But at the end of one summer, one of the moms came up, took me aside, and said, Thank you for being a role model to my son. And I was kind of blown away, because I heard what she was saying, and I accepted it graciously in the moment. But my inside voice, the guy who actually knew me, said, you're not a good role model. <laughs> you're pretty terrible at college. You're a really bad boyfriend. You party too much. And you definitely don't have a sense of direction in your life. So this really gracious comment, this gift that she was giving me, hit my consciousness the way a grain of sand lands in an oyster. It irritated me. It actually hurt. But I worked on it for a very long time, and eventually I turned it into a pearl. See, I'd been wrong about role models all along. They don't have to be perfect. How on earth could they be perfect? They're people, terrible people, just like me. Yay! <laughs> the fact was, if I could be a good role model for this slice of time, well, then maybe all my role models could be perfect or role model-rific in slices of time. 
I didn't need to adopt a, a, a worshipness for their entire life. I could accept an achievement or an attitude or words they wrote or pictures they drew. I could just take that one aspect and let that be my guidepost. See, my previous mindset had been wrong as well. I was chasing perfection and falling short, then beating myself up for doing so. Does that sound familiar to anybody? More than two hands, really? Nobody? Okay, thank you. <laughs> but the problem with chasing perfection is you're never going to catch it. And it holds you back because you're living in fear. Fear of failure, fear of humiliation, and fear of being found out as a fraud. Which brings us back to my hashtag role model plan. So I found my way to a better, healthier attitude, and I decided that if I could recognize aspects of people, strangers, why couldn't I do that with people I know in real life? So we're in social media time now, and I hang out maybe too much on Facebook and Twitter. Um, but when I would see my friends, people I know, people I know who are imperfect, but people I know who are also pretty awesome at times, say something that they had done, uh, instead of just clicking like or favorite or retweeting, I would give a little hashtag role model with no explanation. It was there. Did you, did you finish the first draft of your book? Were you a good parent today? Did you tell, tell a funny joke that made me laugh? Did you sh change the world in some modest way? Role model, role model, role model, mother bleeping role model. I was on board. Recognizing that real people had these actions that could be modeled let me off the hook of perfection. And that was a gift to myself. But tagging people was important for three reasons. For one, it let me note an action or a value that I appreciated. Two, it was an act of generosity to let them know that they were appreciated. And it was an act of vulnerability on my part, too, to kind of open up about a real feeling. And I don't know about you, but generosity and vulnerability are not my go-to moves. I'm really more sarcastic and glib. <laughs> the third thing that came out, though, and this really surprised me, was that by sort of cataloging these actions and ethics and values and blah, 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 I was discovering, I was creating a data set of things I actually valued versus what I thought I might value. There's a subtle difference there. When we start a project, whether it's the project of our lives or whether it's a short-term goal, whatever it is, we have an idea of how things are going to go. We have expectations. And then reality hits and things change. Well, if you try to live with that early expectation instead of the reality, you're going to live with turbulence in your life and cognitive dissonance, things that just don't add up right. And that'll make you unhappy. So what I did with this role model sort of database, I could start aligning my life with the things I really cared about. I started doing that about 10 years ago when I stopped being a full-time designer and started becoming a designer and a writer. And it's made all the difference in the world to me. The other thing it does is that by noting these things that I value, it gives me a tool, tools to be resilient when I screw up. And I do screw up, and I will screw up again. I'll probably screw up later this afternoon, because that's what we do as people. We fail over and over and over again. So now I had a way to correct my course when I did that. Um, Samuel Beckett says, ever tried, ever failed, no matter, try again, fail again, fail better. You've probably heard that quote. It's become very popular in the last 10 years or so. It's big in um, Silicon Valley and entrepreneurialism. But you can adopt it in your own life, too. Fail better. You're going to fail, fail better. But how do you do that? How do you fail better if you don't know what you're trying to achieve in the first place? Well, that's where the role model database comes from, comes into play. And here's my last um, quote. When I became a man, I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown up. That's C.S. Lewis. It was childish of me to expect perfection from myself and from other people. That's just nuts. Um, I eventually managed to put that away, though it takes some vigilance not to fall into old habits of expectation. What the role model tags have done for me, though, is it given me uh, uh, tools for awareness to see that what I really want, what I really want out of life is a life of silliness, joy, and absurdity, coupled with deep thoughts and meaningful actions in my community. So that's what I've learned by hashtagging role model. Maybe you can try it, maybe it'll help you too. Thank you very much.